lawmakers, I, I want to hear you address this. How likely are we this year, this session, to have a roads bill approved? Is this the year? I think so. I think so. I, mean, I think we have to. I mean, I think it is. we've kicked that can long enough, but without addressing it, like I said, it's happening whether you want to or not, the evolution of roads and the condition of the roads, and something has to be done. Um, you got three months to get it done, pretty much. Yeah, we can get it done. <laughs> Thanks, I'm not worried about that part. But we, uh, Act 98, a couple of years ago, you know, we went right at it. I think by the time we moved over the money went to the SIB, I think we're one of the projects out of that is the 385-85 in Greenville County was the number one project out of that one that, that came about. But it takes some time. That was a two, two years ago, I think, we, we passed that one. Uh, and we still haven't started to work on it because it takes a long time to get to that aspect before you see the orange uh, barrels out there and cones and people working. But uh, we started several years ago with that with bridges. I think there's about a bridge in every county being worked on now from the 50 billion uh, we put over that matched it, got us money there. So, I mean, we've started some. I think the fact that you know, there's no no one out there on the road actually working. I mean, even though we started it, getting it passed, it will take some time to, to ramp up. The DOT would have to go back and, with new monies and actually look at the other projects you could do and add to the, the state. Uh, infrastructure plan but I think um, having meetings starting uh, next week and in, in, in the Ways and Means Committee to try to get these bills moving uh, we could have them back if we come back in, in April uh, we have a furlough they'll be on the house floor and we can start taking up a debate and there'll be a lot of debate I mean with it because I mean I think Tommy and, and uh, Chris and Burns both mentioned the fact that we got other legislators out here too Everybody gets to insert their opinion through through amendments and try to change the process. There's things within the ad hoc that probably need to be changed now that, that uh, looking at it to try to get it. But to actually say we're gonna put in and start working on a perfect plan, I don't think there's ever a perfect piece of legislation that starts out perfect nor ends perfect. But uh, so and this, but we can always come back and address the pitfalls or something that they we didn't think about. We put in all of a sudden, well, you know, that has a ramification we need to correct. So we'll go in and have to go back and correct it. But I think uh, it is the goal uh, of the House. That's one reason we had the ad hoc, was to get a bill out of the House of Representatives. I can't speak for the Senate. They're not here, but I know they're working also uh, on bills as well. So I, I think you'll get something done this year. Do the other share that optimism? Let me say this. First of all, last year I was extremely disappointed when we didn't get to it last year. And uh, it would be a great tragedy if we don't get to it this year. And I'm just as optimistic as uh, Chairman White is. I think we cannot afford to leave without getting it addressed and, and pushing something over. And, and, you know, if I had to give it a percentage, I'd put it up in the 95% range that we're going to get something done. I feel confident that uh, the members of the hunt, the uh, 124 members of the House, I can't sit here and name you any member that I know of that's against pushing something through. I think we have to do that. Tommy, I mean, what about you, please? I, uh, I somewhat share their optimism, I guess. I mean, we have a uh, Republican controlled House who's obviously committed to it. Uh, we have a Republican controlled Senate that I know passed a bill out of their finance subcommittee this past week. I think it raised, what, about 900 million or so? different fees and taxes, uh, and driver's license fees, doubling, and so, things like that, a whole array of, uh, of fees. And uh, we have a Republican governor who's come out with parameters to, uh, if we can stick close to them or reach a compromise, can avoid a veto. And it would be nice to see a state where every statewide office in both houses of the parts of the General Assembly are controlled by one party to have a unified bill. That would be uh, that would be breathtaking. But uh, I don't know how optimistic I am about that. Because you know, one thing that the governor, and we call it the governor's bill, even though if you look on the bill, her name's not on it. I mean, I'm the primary sponsor. I have 43 other co-sponsors on it who are all Republicans. And uh, we were talking about, in prior conversations, about the last big income tax bill, cut bill that came through which they referred to as the Sanford tax cut back in 2005. I looked it up and it was, the, the primary sponsor on that was David Wilkins. And, and, and 
Carroll and just about every Republican, including those there now that are, were there then were on it. So you know, we could call it Haley's bill or, or, or Sanford's bill, but in reality, it's a House bill with House members sponsoring and co-sponsoring it. Um, that bill has a corresponding tax cut to try to offset the tax increase on the gas side. Uh, the ad hoc committee bill does not, the Senate bill does not, and I think that's a key component for anything to move forward is to try to address all those concerns. All right. well, panels, we appreciate you uh, outlining your views on this issue. And folks, now it's your opportunity to ask a question. Let it rip. I have a, a comment and then a question for Representative Burns. Comment at the federal level, I hope that the flexibility in MAP 21 continues uh, in the next authorization bill. MAP 21 allows congestion funding to be spent off of the corridors. For example, synchronizing signals on parallel routes. That is an innovative idea, and I hope at the federal level that that uh, flexibility continues. Representative Burns, how does the uh, South Carolina driver's license exemption not violate interstate commerce clause? How you going to well, I'll try to answer that best I can, and uh, I'm not an attorney, so I might not do a great job at it, but uh, the uh, capture of the money from the out-of-staters, number one, if that 21 cents only raises it, if today we file the bill, it raised our tax, our total price per gallon to the national average. So you're not impending somebody over what's around us, North Carolina, Georgia, and in fact, the national average. And then the second part of that, you know, the tax applies to everybody in our state. The commercial people, commercial vehicles, they're going to have to pay it. And then secondly, all our citizens, the 21 cents is for them to pay it, but there's an opt-out provision. And, you know, you talk about, you know, the first thing you hear sometimes is, uh, well, that's unconstitutional. You know, and most people say that when they don't have anything else to criticize your bill on. And, but in fact, you know, the buy low in the Walmart cards lowering the price are not unconstitutional, at least so far. Uh, your children having in-state tuition versus out-of-state tuition in our universities have not been determined unconstitutional, so there's provision to pay less if you're in-state there. And so we feel like we've got enough batteries scattered in the bill that we can uh, get by with that. Like I said, I'm not an attorney. That's what we've been, we've vetted that uh, to some degree, but you know, obviously it hadn't been to the Supreme Court of South Carolina, so that's the best I can answer for now, but thank you for the question. Yes, sir. I'd like to ask Mr. Willard to address uh, Treasurer Loftus's position that he doesn't know where this money's going, 15 or 16 different files, I think he called it, uh, and you seem to be very confident that, that the uh, uh, Transportation Commission understands all that, so would you address that for me, please? Be happy to. Um, I don't know Mr. Loftus, never met Mr. Loftus, and in the year that I've been in the DOT Commission and we meet monthly, never seen Mr. Loftus. Never seen anybody on his team uh, or from his office has never come up to me and asked me a question uh, at all, okay? Uh, I would invite Mr. Loftus to come to the DOT to come meet with senior management. They can tell them where all the money is and where it's going and how it's being used. So that's my response basically to uh, Mr. Loftus. If he's supposed to be controlling the money and he doesn't know where it is, then I question Mr. Loftus needs to come and find out where his money's going. Woody, I have to say, I almost have to contain myself when uh, you started talking about increasing the CTC funding. That's uh, very dear to us. I'm the uh, mayor of a small municipality in Edison County. And uh, I, don't, uh, I don't disagree that the local roads, you know, they need to come back to the local level. Uh, but uh, as far as assuring continued funding is that if the funding level can get up to a reasonable amount where we can see ourselves maybe maintaining those roads at the local level. Um, there's honestly been a little degrading of the trust between small government and the state because of the local government funding uh, not being fully funded. And, and on the local level, we feel like you know, that money should come back to us. But uh, what assurances, I think that's a big hurdle to get over as far as having that dialogue with uh, small government uh, and convince them that those local roads do need to come back to that level. What assurances, is there any, any kind of indexing provision or something uh, that? maybe added to that so that we know the funding would be there and be adequate and remain. Because once we take those roads, as you well know, we'd we'll be in the same position as the state. We, if, if we try to give them to somebody else, you know, it's not always a ready place 
I hear what you're saying, and I understand it sitting on the CTC uh, is one of the other positions being as a commissioner that I, I get to sit and listen. Uh, all of this that we do in business, and it's I guess it's sort of the American way is, uh, and maybe I get trapped with this, there's got to be a level of trust somewhere. At some point, you got to trust somebody to do what they've said that they're going to do. The good thing about the user fee and what, it, what my cohorts up here have educated me on and what I've learned over the last year is there are different, and I hate to use the word pots, but there are pots of money from the general fund and then there's the, those that are generated through this user fee. And the law defines as to how those user fee dollars go. So I guess the General Assembly could change that at any point in time, <coughs> but they haven't done it. And I think um, it's, it's, it's a level of trust in our legislature. And if you get to the point, my feeling's always been, if I get to the point that I can't trust him, then I need to get rid of him. You know? Um, so, um, and I think at, at some point, there's too much going around that questions what they're doing uh, because it's, it's, again, it's more about power than it is about fixing and funding. And uh, I think that uh, to move forward, just one other quick comment on these roads that we're talking about. We're not talking about roads that, that once you get out of your neighborhood and you travel on to get to work or to go buy your groceries and go buy your food. We're talking about roads in this part of the state that are 12 feet wide that are sand that are used for residential roads to go around a lake that is on a golf course that's being asked for the state to maintain on an annual basis. Okay, we're talking about roads that are a quarter of a mile that you travel on a county road and then for some reason, somehow, a quarter of a mile became a state road and then after that, there's another mile of a county road. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna go out and the rest of the county road's in bad shape and as a state, we're gonna go re rehabilitate and pave that quarter of a mile and leave the other parts back. No, these, these are the types of roads that have gotten into the system and create almost 18,000 miles across the state that, that can better be addressed at the local level. But funding does need, and your commission believes, and I believe, that some of that funding needs to go through it. And I think that you just gotta trust the legislature now. I know there are other issues here about the uh, county funding and they're bringing it back. But that's another pot of money that that's got to come out of, and this is a, this is money that uh, uh, that they can watch. And and, and to my knowledge, y'all help me here. You can't play with that 16.75 percent. I mean, that's not something that y'all can go play with. I don't believe it. Um, in the budget aspect, Mac, I'll tell you about. And I hear a lot of that. That oh well, we can't trust it because you don't fully fund our local government fund. If you get back to where all this started, it went with home rule. When the, when the legislature, I mean, basically the, the senators, uh, you had supply bills, you had different kind of funding mechanisms. Well, in home rule, we gave you a lot of flexibility to go raise fees, taxes, do ordinances. The legislature's giving you the ability to raise local option sales tax, hospitality taxes, accommodation taxes, and do all that stuff. Where y'all benefit from that, we don't. Um, and you're talking about the local government fund. That's one of many funds that flows back to, to the locals. And it's only one that they choose to pick on. The CTC money that goes back from the gas tax uh, was up in that. How that works is the Department of Revenue collects and DOT calls over and says, sell this much gas, you owe us this money, you send it. What the, the legislature does, when you hear our general fund budget, when we talk about general fund dollars, this year's about $7 billion. The total overall budget is $24 billion. What we do is we authorize them to spend that gasoline tax. We don't appropriate it to them. It never comes through the treasurer to go to us. It bypasses us, but they can't spend it without an authorization. So we never really touch those dollars. Even though CTC dollars, while there's a line in there, we authorize it, that's gas tax dollars. We just roll unless we put one <coughs> money in it, which I think last year we put somewhere around $11 million, I think extra one-time dollars in the CTC side of things. So I think let's don't confuse the pots of money and the authorization of what you have going. To you to say, well, I don't want those roads because I can't trust you. Uh, I don't think any of the CTC monies have ever been taken or, or reduced. I don't think uh, so. That argument really doesn't hold water to me. Uh, but we had to reduce the local government fund. Uh, 
uh, because I think we're funding most our state government at 2007, 2008 levels of funding, which is mental health and everything else, the health insurance. You know, we have the IRF. I think most local governments participate in that insurance system one way or the other. So we, we pick up a lot of that for you too. So if we want to have a debate on local government fund, I'll welcome that one. But, uh, but anyway, I, I think at some point you got to look. And point being in Anderson, I know there's uh, the Chamber of Commerce ladies here. A lot of these small routes, you're right, are within the municipalities. Um, and I've got, in my district, I know several that, and I know y'all ride through different municipalities and you got a, a streets parallel and you may have a block and a street running through the middle of it. That's a state road. Why? That's just they say, take that back. It may not need to be paid. You know, take it, plow it up, donate it back, do whatever, but get it out. It makes our system healthier and your system healthier <coughs> also at that same point. Uh, some municipalities want it because you may want to, uh, that state won't allow you to, to beautify your main street or what have you. You don't want to plant trees out there and do some things different to have, you know, sit outside dining. Well, here's your opportunity. Take that back. And it's not, I mean, we can, we can do it to the point that we'd have a lot of grief and re realize that. Uh, we don't want to tell you you're going to take them back. What we're saying is give you the option. If you want to do it, here's how the funding will increase. You have to work with the Department of Transportation to come out and tell you which roads you're going to do. But there's a lot of them that you're exactly right. The off-ramp, you know, maybe you don't decide road for, you know, it may be a quarter of a mile, maybe whatever. Well, that part's the state. Once you get past that, it becomes a, a local road, whether it's a municipal or a county road. And then when it comes back on, that last little piece is, is back at the state road. So we're going to maintain those. You've got to maintain that in the middle. Uh, that's insane. I mean, what we're trying to do is basically essentially go back and capture parts of, I would think, home rule on the road side of things and work with y'all to, to give you that portion too. So, I mean, I think that's the intent behind it uh, because they're not going to get paid anyway. It's much like Missouri. Missouri's DOT came out and said, look, we got a big road system, much like the state of South Carolina. A lot of these are little local roads, little small things. We don't have the money to do it. There's no one traveling on these things. We're just not going to do it. That was a very good question you asked. The, uh, I had a, a bridge coming into Greer that went out back last August. It's a two-lane bridge, just on the culvert. It took seven months to get it replaced. Mainly because I found out later the big problem was it actually qualified for some kind of federal matching dollars, which caused a delay on the money coming in. But you know, seven months for a two-lane bridge. That was a little, a little long. Um, how many of you here represent local government? Again, raise your hands. Okay, do you know the person, the sole person responsible for the uh, problem between, maybe, maybe the lack of trust between local government and Columbia? There's one person responsible for that. His, his name has been in the news recently. Ben Tillman. Ben Tillman not only being known as a fairly bad character when it comes to race relations, also saddled us with something called the 1895 state constitution we operate under. And the sole purpose of that constitution when he, when he drew it up was to limit local government and basically place most of the power with the General Assembly. Also, I think Woody sort of touched on that a little bit ago when he talked about the power over DOT. Who should it belong to? Should it belong to us and the legislature? Should it belong to the governor? Uh, one issue I had with the ad hoc bill was it allows the governor to appoint the commissioners with the approval of the legislature. Then the commissioners hire the secretary who reports to the governor. That's backwards. That doesn't make any sense at all. I mean, at all. But anyway, that's, that's maybe a separate debate. But the issue is really power and who should control what happens on a local level. And uh, special purpose districts, restrictions on what you all can do as far as taxes, taxes go, all that goes back to that old constitution. And if you talk about a vision for the 21st century, what we really ought to be talking about 
as far as a long range plan is, is how to rid ourselves of that. It's not about taking Tillman's name off a of building in Clemson. It's about getting him out of our way when we go through the budgetary process. And uh, there's a lot to be worked on there. But uh, I understand what you're saying. The, the bill that I have has no, has no devolution contained in it at this point. Basically what it says is, we know DOT needs to be reformed. We think it needs to go into the governor's office. We want to give it about $400 million to start with. Let's reform it, define its <coughs> mission for the 21st century, then see what money it really needs past that. Right, uh, time for some more questions. So that's the question. Realistically, can we do, can we do it? Uh, you know, the fact that 45, or I should say 43 other Republicans in addition to myself have signed on to one that contains her provisions. And I know there's some overlap. I think some signed on to both bills in the House. But that does suggest that there's a veto problem, at least on the House side. And then the Senate side, again, that bill has just come through subcommittee, so it hasn't even hit the floor, floor to be debated yet. Um, so. I would suspect that we would be smart to get her support as much as we can. Now, you know, it's, it's a long way from here to the end of the road on, on, all, on all this. In fact, I think only one bill's been scheduled to be debated in the ways and means at this point, which is the ad hoc bill. So it may be that that one uh, has enough amendments to it once it gets through the full House debate that she would be fine with it. But we'll just have, we'll just have to wait and see. Good, good, good morning. Thank you for your time. Uh, the reading I've done is from the same time. It seems to be out of the How did that be before you got out of this? Correct me if I'm wrong. From what I've read, 83% of the money we've been spending on other than on the Lord's beauty structure, 17% of the maintenance. Uh, how are we going to be, how are we going to be able to be able to? First of all, as far as who did the study and, and the uh, consultants that did that, um, 
I'm not aware of that conflict, but if you want to see me afterwards and give me the name of the company and where you think the conflict is, I'll be glad to look into it. Second thing is on the infrastructure bank. The infrastructure bank, you've got to make a, um, uh, you've got to make an application. Thank you. You've got to make an application to the infrastructure bank in order to receive dollars, and you've got to have a match. The infrastructure bank is not set up to where it goes out and looks necessarily for needs because it is based on the local governments and the local entities requesting and identifying those needs and putting those needs together and then coming to the infrastructure bank um, in coordination with the DOT to get improvements done. There's a lot of talk about that a lot of this money's gone to the low part, low part of the state. Yeah. In the cycle of things, there's been a lot that has gone down to the coast. Uh, they provided match money. They've had one cent sales tax that provided match money. Uh, but we also, in the beginning of the state infrastructure bank, got a lot of money up here with when I-85 was widened from two lanes to three lanes. Uh, Greenville County benefited a good bit and Spartanburg County benefited a good bit on some of our major roads and widening. Uh, White Horse Road got part of that money. Um, uh, 101 was part of that money. So there's money that has been spent up here. And currently under the SIB, they were getting our share. Is there a good bit of that that's going now to the 385-85 interchange? It's going to the widening of 85 from two lanes to three lanes from in, in Spartanburg County, taking it up through Cherokee County. Uh, so. The money is being spent, and it's being spent based on application, and it's being spent based on need and congestion. Uh, it's not being spent because one person or one group or one entity said, oh, that will help me out. I want you to go do that. There's a process that it has to go through. So um, I think those are some, that's some misinformation that's been out there. Mike, you had something you wanted to say? Sir, I appreciate your question, also particularly the first part of it. Uh, I'm not a proponent that uh, we shouldn't be doing anything on any new construction. Anybody that's uh, progressive and wants to bring business and all in understands that. But I do agree with you in 3650, the uh, 16 cents that we're already taking up, you know, is going to do what it's already doing. And the additional money in this bill, as I pointed out earlier, is only for maintenance and repair for bridges and roads. And that, that particular part would only be for what you had uh, asked the first part of your question on. So I wanted to make sure that was clearly understood. Thank you. Okay. Folks, we have reached the point in our program where we're going to need to wrap things up. I know some of you still have questions. I apologize we haven't gotten to them. Perhaps you would like to approach the uh, panelists individually uh, during the, the lunch break or immediately after we uh, stop here. But uh, panelists, thank you so much for all the uh, information you've shared with us, folks, we appreciate your questions. <laughs> and it has been, uh, been my honor to be with you today. Everyone have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Pam. I'll see you later. Great dialogue, great questions. Thank you for being here as well. My name is Randy Emler. I'm with Catawba Regional Council of Government. It's a pleasure for us to be a part of Ten at the Top along with Appalachian Cog and Upper Savannah Cog. I know I'm the only thing that's keeping you from lunch, so we're going to keep this very brief. Uh, four things. Uh, the program today will be available on YouTube, and Dean tells me that he will send a link out to everyone, and I imagine it would also be on the Tenth of Top website. That should be available on Monday for those of you that want to want to go back and look at it. A couple of other thank yous, uh, in addition to to Tom and the panelists, uh, Hank McCullough and Piedmont Natural Gas. They're our sponsor today, so thank you very much for them. guidance and leadership of the Ten at the Top Board of Directors and all the partner organizations that uh, comprise Ten at the Top. I appreciate your support. This is our fifth year of doing these, this type of forum, which just promotes dialogue, open and transparent government. We appreciate that. 
Uh, in your packets, there is a save the date card for you. The next elected officials forum will be at Fisher Middle School in Greenville, just down the street from CUI car, and that will be a forum to discuss the role of public education. So we would encourage you to come out. I believe that date is April 30th, Fisher Middle School in Greenville for the next forum. Last thing. Um, lunch. We have lunch available out by the cafe. We would encourage you to network and mingle with those who are here. Uh, ask the remainder of those questions that may not have been addressed up to this point of our panelists or, or anybody else. If you, your time is short, we do have some containers that you can take that and go if you don't have time to spend with us. Again, thank you very much panelists. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it very, very much. Y'all have a great day.